Hi there, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a little bit. Um, today, really simple uh, video in reality. Just sometimes I get in my head these ideas that I want to validate common approaches, common techniques, um, for my own purposes, just to understand which ones are beneficial. You know, there are so many ways to do so many things, and, you know, a lot of times we just copy-paste code and run with it. And, you know, with today's computers, let's not kid ourselves, often it really doesn't make a huge difference. But these are the things that keep me up at night sometimes, and today this is one of these cases. I felt like fiddling a little bit with reading files. So these are typically text files, CSVs, SQL files, those types of things, where I want to read a file into a variable, into memory, for me then to work with, to parse, to do whatever I'm going to do with it. doesn't make a difference. That it. But for today's discussion, I wanted to look at some of the common approaches that we can use for reading files into memory and see which one is the actual I guess, best approach to use that is, in fact, the fastest technique to use. So let me just jump into this testing database that I created. And I'm going to show you the different techniques I've used. So we're going to look at ADODB stream. We're going to look at file input. We're going to look at FSO. You're going to see in the FSO and the ADODB, there are actually two approaches for each one of them. And we're going to look at that in two seconds. So let's just go and look at ADODB. ADODB is really simple, um, my function here. Uh, none of this is available currently on my website. I have to write up an article about this. But just to show you, I've got here early late binding options, best of both worlds, as I've explained numerous times. And this is where the magic happens. We're going to take our ADODB stream. We're going to make sure it's in a text mode. We're going to use the most common UTF-8, although, you know, this could easily be a parameter up here, an argument here, to have different character sets acceptable to this function. Hint, hint. Um, and then we open it, we load it, and we read it in its entirety, and we pass it back to our function. So if we call this function, we are actually grabbing the text that it's read, and we could pass it back to a variable. Um, for anyone that isn't clear on that concept, what I'm saying is we could have a function and we could have a dim s file content. Good if I wrote it properly. And we could just do that. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, sorry, as string, for instance. And then we would come here and we would do that. That's better. So uh, we use the function to go read the file, and then it passes back the string that it's read back to our variable. And then we can use our variable to do parsing or whatever makes us happy. But that's in, in all the functions we're going to look at, this is always the same approach. So they're going to read the text, and then we can grab that text to do things with it. So this is ADODB, early binding, late binding. You'll see I have almost the same function. But if you notice here, I'm not putting the declarations for set or the new, so the early binding, late binding to set our object. Instead, I'm using shove. So self-healing object variables. I have an article on my website about it. This is the way to do things if you're not already aware, because basically it saves the overhead of doing this or this every single time you call the function. So every single time I call this function, if I have to read multiple files, for instance, well, then it's got to go through this in initialization or create the object. And that's heavy. Anytime you're doing this, it's heavy processing. And we want to avoid as much. And that's what self-healing object variable permits. It permits the system to only do that overhead one time and then keep it in memory for all future calls. So yes, the first time this runs, it will be as slow as the other version, but every subsequent call, this should, and I put in quotes, should be faster. So, like I said, I wanted to evaluate which approach was better, so I also wanted to throw in there, does self-healing object variables actually help us in this context? So, to prove once again whether or not self-healing object variables are worth our time. 
So that's ADO DB stream. Then we look at file input, which is another very common approach. So um, I've made this version of my function a little bit more flexible because files can also be binary and I wanted my function to be flexible for my personal needs. <clears throat> so I have an argument here. Is this going to be a binary read or not? I default it to no, so a text file. And so it's going to come here. If it's set to true, it's a binary, then it has to process it in this manner. But in the case that we're really interested in for today's discussion, text, well, then it's able to do it in this manner. And yeah, that's it. Uh, pretty straightforward. And then we move on. Uh, like I say here, we're going to get its file content and push it back to our variable and it spits it back to our function calling function. The uh, file system object is another very common approach for reading files. Here you go, we create our object just like the ADODB stream, or we do a new whatever if we're doing early binding or late binding. But basically at the end of the day, it's all done right here. We're gonna go grab that file that we're passing here, and then we're gonna go and read its text stream. So you you know you have your choice. Uh, the try state here that I have here, um, you see here, Unicode or ASCII. Those are your two options for FSO. Once again, then I decided to do the same thing, but using the self-healing object variable. And then I have here my self-healing object variables. They're on my website. Um, really straightforward in both cases. Then I have my timer routine. Once again, it's on my website, which permits me to do time evaluations that these functions will take to perform. And then I have a testing routine where I go grab different files. I've done a whole different setups and tests, a whole multitude. Um, but basically I come through and I'm going to test each one. I'm going to do uh, multiple iterations over multiple files. Each time I'm starting my timer, I'm going to get the content. I'm stopping my timer and I'm calculating the elapsed time that that basically this one single operation took. And then I'm pushing it to a table. That way I have a log of hundreds, if not thousands of iterations. And basically I run this guy and I end up with a beautiful table like this. So as you can see, iteration one, two, three, four, and I just keep going over and get execution times. Then I run it through a query to go get min, max, averages, as you can see of each different type. And then we're able to do beautiful graphics such as this one, where we can clearly see the winners and the losers of reading text files in VBA. And as you can see here, the ADODB stream, EB early binding using self-healing object variables is your winner. Uh, slightly behind it would be the same one, but using late binding. So it would seem that ADODB is the way to go. Because then you go along, so this is once again self-healing object variables, but even the next two are still ADODB late binding and early binding. That actually surprised me a little bit that the early binding was slower than the late binding. But then we follow with the file input and then the FSO uh, are all slower, much slower. Um, so as you can see, the early binding, uh, show uh, early binding, late binding, self-healing object variables, and last but not least, the early binding and the late binding. So all of that to say, if you're going to read a file, use ADODB. And in the best case world, you're going to use the early binding with self-healing object variables. And I'm going to stop there. I hope this is somewhat informative to you. I do plan on putting out an article. I'm not quite sure exactly when, but it will be coming out in the coming weeks. Um, just with all the different functions and basically, you know, the all this information that you've just seen in this video, but most importantly, it's the functions and you guys can copy paste and get up and running with any of these techniques that you want. Some of this is already on my website. Let's not kid ourselves. I already have demonstrated FSO in the past. I've shown the file input and things like that. Um, 
but I have refined some of these functions since uh, while working on this and also on client projects. So I will do a more updated um, article, like I say, going over all of this with my most recent versions of these functions. I hope this is informative to a few of you out there and helps a few of you optimize the way you work with uh, reading external text files. And I guess we'll see you in the next one. I hope everyone's doing well and take care, guys. Have a great end of day.